Edward Vout was among the 40 passengers and crew members who died when Flight 93 crashed into a field near Shanksville, Pennsylvania on 9-11. Now, two decades later, Vout's brother Gordon tells correspondent Owen Jensen how he was able to move forward after his brother's death. Gordon felt telling me about his brother Edward. Ed was a, just a generous, gentle, brilliant man uh, who loved nothing more than his family. And Gordon, who I interviewed earlier this week at the Flight 93 Memorial, says if his brother were here... I'll give him a big hug first. The passengers and crew members of Flight 93, of course, had family and friends and futures to look forward to. But then came the morning of September 11, 2001. Fast forward 20 years and visitors to this memorial and generations of Americans to come will see their names etched in stone and learn the story of how they fought back against evil. Flight 93 National Memorial Superintendent Steve Clark says over 400,000 visitors arrive here every year. But when they come and they really experience these 2,200 acres, the Tower of Voices, the Visitor Center, and of course the Wall of Names, it, it just really empowers them and they walk away with a much clearer understanding of what happened on 9-11 and what those 40 people were faced with and ultimately what they were able to accomplish by thwarting the attack on Washington, D.C. That's where this plane was heading. Gene Callahan, a first-time visitor, thinks of all the years of life they still had yet to live. People like Lauren Catuzzi Grancolis, who died along with her unborn child. It comes back. I mean, you remember all these poor people were on that plane and everything and the destruction. And it is something that makes you really think back at how quick your life can change and the whole world can change. And Paige Grogan, also visiting the memorial, was just a toddler on 9-11. You feel touched, basically, when you leave here. Like, you come thinking, like, you're just going to see, like, this field with everything. But then you feel, like, different when you leave. When you walk these hallowed grounds, your eyes are immediately drawn to this. As Gordon explains, it's where the struggle for the cockpit ended. The boulder is marks the, the impact site where the plane came down. We're, we're standing here at the edge of the flight path. Uh, by the time the plane was, was just about to come down over our heads here, it was inverted, traveling just under 600 miles an hour uh, at the end of a battle uh, that our loved ones waged to try to retake control of the plane. The sheer horror of that extremely violent day is hard to fathom in what is now such a peaceful, quiet setting surrounded by beautiful nature, breezy sunshine, and soft clouds. Gordon says his brother's spirit guides him. Uh, you know, I think if I had a chance to talk to Ed at the moment, I'd, I'd talk to him about his family, how proud I am of his wife, his children, uh, how they've been able to honor him and, and respect him and, and move forward with their lives. And Gordon tells me he could not have moved forward without his faith. For me, there was never anger at God at all. Uh, he lifts us up, he supports me. Um, the anger was directed at humanity, uh, at terrorists uh, that for some reason thought that making a political statement by murdering thousands of people was going to get them something. And on this day, at the Flight 93 Memorial, chalk artists create portraits of the lives taken, capturing their smiles and humanity and what could have been. In Shanksville, Pennsylvania, Owen Jensen, EWTN News Nightly.